Welcome to Shangri-La Botanical Gardens and Nature Center. I'm Rick Lewandowski, Executive Director. We're so happy that you've taken time today to join us for a tour of the gardens. We're so excited and, and want to uh, share with you our commitment to improving the quality of life for residents of our region. Some of you may not know where Shangri-La Botanical Gardens and Nature Center is. We're located in Orange, Texas in the southeast corner of the state along the uh, border with Louisiana and Texas. Uh, Shangri-La is 252 acres of wonderful natural areas and gardens. 25 acres are found in gardens and support facilities and the remaining 225 acres are in natural habitats with lowlands and aquatic habitats. Our modern Shangri-La Botanical Gardens and Nature Center is an eco-friendly place where people can explore their world in the, in the beauty of a natural environment. We have 35 full-time and part-time staff dedicated to creating beautiful gardens, preserving natural habitats, and doing outstanding education here at Shangri-La for both children and adults. The original Shangri-La Gardens started as the inspiration of H.J. Letcher Stark, who in 1940s created his beautiful gardens. He dreamed of a place where he could have a place to show folks the beauty of gardens and the beauty of nature together, as well as a refuge from the world. And he was inspired by the name Shangri-La in the 1933 novel Lost Horizon, written by James Hilton. Today, our modern Shangri-La Botanical Gardens is a wonderful space created to do all the things that Mr. Stark had loved and wanted us to share with others. We're so proud of all the things that we do here to try and help the public appreciate and value the nature that we have here at Shangri-La. I truly hope that you'll enjoy your virtual tour today and please make it a, a point to come here to Southeast Texas and visit us in person. Have a wonderful journey. Welcome to the garden tour portion of your virtual tour. I'm Jennifer Buckner, Director of Horticulture, and I'll be guiding you through our unique habitat and garden areas of Shangri-La Gardens. In this space, visitors uh, are checked in as they arrive by our garden greeters. They also help guests orient themselves to our garden by providing maps and directions and even talk about special things they can see on their visit. Upon entering Shangri-La, Visitors after check-in are greeted with this beautiful courtyard. We planted the courtyard in mixed perennials and shrubs so that year-round all seasons have something of interest to see in our courtyard. Plant labeling is very important to us too and so you'll see a lot of the plants around the garden including in the courtyard labeled. We showcase some Texas natives here, such as the Mealy Cup Sage. This variety is called Henry Dulberg. And then also Wine Cups, which as you travel most roads in Texas, you will find growing on the sides of the road, but do really well in a garden setting like this. In the Here We Grow Children's Garden, we feature an edibles landscape that showcases many different types of fruiting shrubs and trees. These varieties are usually found in a lot of home gardens here in Southeast Texas. We also feature the Dancing Sisters Bottle Tree Sculpture by artist Stephanie Dwyer. The rest of the children's garden is raised beds. You can explore your five senses with some of the plants in these beds as well as different types of vegetables. Adjacent to the children's garden is the first of three exhibition greenhouses. The first being the Epiphyte House. This greenhouse has a long history, was built in 1917, was originally found downtown at our sister venue, the WH Stark House, was brought over in the 40s by H.J. Lutcher Stark when he built his other two greenhouses. Plants found here are quite unusual, so let's go inside and check them out. Different types of epiphytes 
plants that grow on other plants but are not parasites can be found in this greenhouse. We showcase orchids, bromeliads, and even some semi-epiphytic plants such as philodendrons. The next greenhouse, the display greenhouse, has many different types of tropical plants, including some unusual vines. And the last greenhouse, the classroom greenhouse, is outfitted with potting benches. It's used in our education programming. So what you see here in the wetland demonstration gardens is small scale phytoremediation. We have runnels that transect the Great Lawn and another circulation system that runs through Ruby Lake that brings Ruby Lake water up to these four ponds where the nitrates and phosphates get taken out of the water by these plants and the cleaner water moves right back out into Ruby Lake. The plants on showcase here in the wetland demonstration gardens are pickerel weed, water canna, duck potato, white and red Texas star hibiscus, and lizard's tail. Our next stop is this plaza here, which we affectionately call the Frog Ponds, an original part of Lutcher Stark's Shangri-La Gardens. Ringed around these two pools that have our water lilies in them are coal stones, which came from the streets of Europe many years ago. Originally, what we found in our records, Dunkirk, France. It's a beautiful spot that we showcase some of our annuals at. Among the many water features found here at Shangri-La Gardens is Ruby Lake, an original part of Mr. Shark Shangri-La also um, that he made many years ago. It is home to our heronry. Besides the great egrets that nest here in the spring and early summer, we also have cormorants, uh, and hingas, uh, green herons, ibises, and many more different types of birds. My staff have spent a lot of time on this lake improving the water quality found here. Strategically placed pumps are found throughout the property around the lake, which adds dissolved oxygen to the water that the uh, beneficial microbes need to digest the nitrates and phosphates from the bird excrement since it is a heronry. The garden gateway is home to some of our more unusual plants here at Shaker Law Gardens. Amorphophallus paeonifolius can be found here, the elephant foot yam. Also we have these giant staghorn ferns. Um, we keep the staghorns in our greenhouse um, during the winter time and then bring them out once it warms up. We have this great green space that we call the Great Lawn. It's home to many majestic live oaks that we'll see a little bit later on our tour as we round the garden pathways. Adjacent to the Great Lawn is the perennial border, home to all different types of perennials including a few subtropicals that are perennial here in our climate. Let's explore the middle of the garden, which features garden rooms. Mr. Stark is quoted as saying, I'm working with nature, trying to paint this scene with the most beautiful colors nature will give me. At his original Shangri-La, Mr. Stark incorporated techniques such as color variation and water reflection that we see here in these rooms and elsewhere in the garden. Expanding on his example, we also pick up concepts familiar to every artist, line, shape, texture, and color. So one of these rooms, the line garden, is undergoing a renovation, as you can see from the brightly colored flags. And guess what? You're gonna have to come back later and see what our new garden looks like. 
more history. This is another original garden to Mr. Stark Shangri-La. We call this the Hanging Garden. We think that he created this step pyramid looking structure to be reminiscent of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. A lot of the plants here are subtropical and tropical in nature and are just getting into their prime as we move closer into warmer weather, summertime, and heat and humidity in Texas. <laughs> Check out this big pot behind me. These are sugar kettles. Sugar kettles have a long history of being known for boiling down sugar cane. We use them out here to showcase our annual displays that change three times a year. In addition to the sugar kettles, we also plant up our horse troughs with bright, colorful annuals. A unique experience for our visitors is to come down to our herring blind, especially when the great egrets, also known as herons, are nesting. They come in about the end of January, sometimes as late as February, and nest until early summer. Besides the great egrets, there's also cormorants that are found nesting here in our trees, but you'll also catch a few wood ducks. The, our alligator is sometimes out on the sun deck, and the soft shell turtle has been making an appearance here lately. Come with me inside, and we'll catch a close-up of those birds over our 13-acre ruby lake. Here at the water wall, the water creates white noise that helps with the sound created by the busiest road in Orange, Texas, right on the other side of the wall. And if you look over here, we love our live oak trees so much that we made a hole in the wall for it. So water reflection. Remember, I mentioned it as one of Mr. Stark's concepts of his garden. Now he did it on a much larger scale around Ruby Lake with his azaleas. And here we use it at the Pond of the Blue Moon. We have our azaleas, President Clay's and Southern Charm, that ring the Pond of the Blue Moon. It's beautiful in the spring to see the flowers reflecting off the water. The next stop on our tour is a visit to the sculpture room. Here you will see the spiral, branching, circle, and stripe rooms that each have a stainless steel sculpture by Linda Covet, a sculptor from Canada. Her work is inspired by nature and its myriad of forms. The plants seen on the sculpture are also found in the landscape. Here in the Great Lawn, is another great vantage point to see the perennial border and the garden rooms in the center of the garden. Check out this grand specimen of a southern magnolia here at Magnolia Plaza. The paving and landscape mimics the pattern seen in a cross section of a magnolia seed cone. This concludes the garden tour but let's go behind the scenes to our production greenhouse. Our production greenhouse is a 20,000 square foot growing space for many different types of plants, not just bedding plants and perennials, but we also keep our stock plants here, even our famous corpse flower. The production greenhouse team consists of a greenhouse manager, and two greenhouse technicians, and they're responsible for growing over 50,000 plants a year for us. Okay, folks, you've had the garden tour. You've seen behind the scenes at the production greenhouse. Now, let's go to Katie Krantz and see our natural areas and a little bit how we use those spaces too. 
Hey there, APGA colleagues and friends. Katie Krantz here, Director of Education and Volunteer Programs at Shangri-La Gardens. You've already had the opportunity to meet our Executive Director, Rick, where he told you a little bit about our history and the mission of our organization. You've also had an opportunity to have a guided tour from our Director of Horticulture, Jennifer. You may recall during that tour that she said the gardens were right around 15 acres and that Ruby Lake, our, that beautiful waterway, took up around 13 acres. Well, Shangri-La as a whole is 252 acres, so that means we have 224 acres of natural area. So join me as I show you around and we explore the ins and outs of our nature center component of Shangri-La. As we begin our journey back to the Nature Discovery Center, you're going to notice that the pathways look different than they do in the formal gardens. This is done so that guests, as they enter the Nature Center area, feel very immersed in a more wild feeling setting. Behind me, you'll see a building called the Nature Discovery Center Lab. This is an indoor classroom space that can be utilized for any type of programming that we might be conducting. We actually try not to use this space though because all of our programming is centered on being outside and in nature. Behind me is the Nature Discovery Center Pavilion. This differs from our Nature Discovery Center lab in the sense that the lab is designed for more structured education, which I mentioned we primarily use in the event of inclement weather. We try to focus on being outside and immersed in nature, but sometimes rain does happen. Well, this building behind me, the Nature Discovery Center Pavilion, is an opportunity for hands-on educational experiences for any guests coming into the garden. These educational components are designed to be both passive um, as well as active learning opportunities for the entire family. Everything in this building is designed to be touched and explored and enjoyed. It is designed to create curiosity and to engage minds both uh, of little tiny kids all the way up to their adults. So this building is really something for our guests designed to bring them closer to their outdoor space and what we have out here at Shangri-La Gardens. We are out here in the Cypress Tupelo Swamp. Cypress Tupelo Swamp is one of the many habitats that make Southeast Texas unique. It is also one of the many habitats that you'll find out here at Shangri-La Gardens. One of the best ways to explore this swamp habitat in this area is on Shangri-La Gardens Outpost Tour. Our Outpost Tour is a naturalist guided pontoon boat ride on Adams Bayou, which is a waterway that borders the garden property. This is also the only way that a guest would get an opportunity to explore our more natural areas and also see our outdoor classrooms. After guests have had the opportunity to explore the Nature Discovery Pavilion, while they're waiting for their naturalist guide to come and ready them for their outpost tour on Adams Bayou, they come to this building, which is our boathouse. It's at this structure that our guests board and embark on their outpost tour adventure on the waterway you see behind me, Adams Bayou. During their tour, our guests learn all about the natural history of the area, what makes the Cypress Tupelo Swamp as well as Adams Bayou unique, all en route to our outdoor classrooms where they'll have an opportunity to view those up close. Welcome to Beaver Pond Outpost. This is one of our two outdoor classrooms. This is also a premier stop on our outpost tour. We bring guests out here to show them around, let them become immersed in the surrounding of the outpost, but we also use this for any of our curriculum-based school lessons. So imagine coming out here with your class and instead of a classroom with four walls, you are sitting out here in Cypress Tupelo Swamp when you're learning about Cypress Tupelo Swamp. It's much more impactful when you're immersed in your outdoor environment. 
Now we have one additional outdoor classroom. It's called Cypress Knee. Cypress Knee is structurally identical to the outdoor classroom that we're standing in. However, the scenery around the outdoor classroom looks very different. While this is surrounded by water and the Cypress Tupelo Swamp, Cypress Knee is actually surrounded by a meadow habitat. So it gives us the ability to change location dependent on what we are teaching. Now that you've had an opportunity to tour the gardens and I've shown you around to some of our natural areas, let me tell you how we use some of these spaces in our educational programming. The Shangri-La Gardens education team facilitates a wide variety of educational programming from on-site programs to off-site programs, signature events, adult programming, and family-friendly programming. We strive to create a safe environment where students can develop a relationship with nature. We hope to change students' attitudes toward nature and the environment and provide the tools for them to change their behaviors and be more environmentally responsible. Whether we teach school children, teachers, families, or adults, we try to incorporate several principles into our programs. We want them to be hands-on and experiential. We want individuals to be totally immersed. We combine structured and unstructured exploration. We always facilitate small groups, no more than a 12 to one teacher to student ratio. We strive to be facilitators, not lecturers. We believe learning should be fun. And most importantly, we strive to do what the classroom teachers cannot easily do teach outside. Our goal is to be the best teaching tool for the classroom teacher that we can possibly be. All of our curriculum-based programs are designed using the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills Standards, the Texas Natural Resource Environmental Literacy Plan, and the North American Association for Environmental Education's Guidelines for Excellence. We use a three-tiered approach when we design our lessons, and we try to incorporate the following concepts natural history, naming the flora and fauna, ecology, showing the relationship between the flora and fauna and where we as humans fit in, and sustainability, what changes we should consider so that humans have a positive impact on ecosystems instead of a negative one. As you can imagine, the formal gardens, as well as the natural areas, provide us the perfect place to incorporate all of these concepts in our programming. The heart of our educational programming is our curriculum-based naturalist guided field trips. These are field trips that the classroom teacher can sign up for to bring their students out to the garden for a program that is facilitated by our Shangri-La educators. The neat thing about this is that the Stark Foundation reimburses those schools in Orange County for their busing. So there is literally zero cost for the school or the student. Shangri-La Gardens Education Department hosts a wide variety of events, family programs, as well as curriculum-based learning opportunities. On average, we see between 25 and 30,000 individuals through our programming here at Shangri-La Gardens. Thanks for joining us for this virtual tour of Shangri-La Botanical Gardens and Nature Center in Orange, Texas. We're so proud of the programs that we've uh, created here at Shangri-La Gardens. The gardens are beautiful, our education programs are stellar, and we look forward to seeing you here at Shangri-La sometime in the not too distant future. Have a great APGA conference and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.